Hello, happy Thursday, everyone. Hello, replay viewers. Thanks so much for being here. And thank you, YouTube viewers, for watching as well. YouTube viewers, if you'd like to watch live, join me on Periscope in the Periscope app. Uh, look for Penguin and Fish, all one word. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Thanks so much for coming in, guys. I see y'all popping in. I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. Hey there, guys. It's Thursday, and Thursday means new block day for the Splendid Sampler. We are going to be starting block 22. Woohoo! I'm so excited. So, guess what, guys? There's a whole lot of detail in here, but it is paper pieced, and I love paper piecing. Uh, uh, if you guys have been here before with me, you know I love paper piecing. It mean, for me, it means no measuring. I can cut blobs instead of cutting perfect little squares and stuff, and everything turns out so perfect. I absolutely love it. Uh, so we'll be starting that tonight. We have our, I have my little blacks ready to go, and I'll explain how all this works. Um, I'm also going to try just add a quarter ruler. <laughs> so I bought this just to give it a go for paper piecing. I'm on the fence. This is my first time testing it, so we'll see how it goes. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we create lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer as well, and I'm here on Periscope every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, I invite you to join me in craft. I uh, pick a craft every night, and we just work on it. Lately, we've been doing the Splendid Sampler uh, the Splendid Sampler quilt along, so you can find out more information on that at thesplendidsampler.com. Uh, we are block 22. There are 100 blocks total, and they're released every Thursday and Sunday, and it's a mystery. So today is new quilt day, <laughs> and I just saw my brother pop in, Tic Tac Foe, so that's awesome. Say hi to, say hi to my brother Justin. We will be, uh, we're going to go see him tomorrow for the Wisconsin Dells Wine Walk. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. Let me know what you're working on tonight, and we will get going. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. So I got all my supplies right here. Uh, I have a postcard, and I'll show you how that works. I'm going to use it uh, for folding. Okay, so the ruler is great. It's a must-use if you do a lot of paper piecing. Okay, well, good. We are going to give it a go. I, it came in a short and a long, but I thought I'd get the long just in case, um, just in case I wanted to do a larger paper piecing project. So the funny thing about this ruler, and I think it's, you know, the magic part of it, is that it has a little lip on the edge. Let's see if I can see it this way. So there, you can see the, the little lip right there. And I think that's going to help us just hook on our folded pieces of paper. But we'll get to that. So... This project has a lot of, it's basically divided into darks and lights. I know in the, on the website, I didn't print this out in color, but I know she used different colors for each of these with the white, with the white background. I'm going to use this for my white. It's just this cute little uh, purple polka dot on white. This is probably the lightest color I have in my Splendid Sampler choices right now. Um, but I thought for everything else, I would use my scraps. So I store all my scraps from the Splendid Sampler in this little, uh, it's this kind of, what is this, a clipboard that has a little container with it. So I have a, a baggie that has all my thread snippets. So these are too small to actually use for piecing, but I'm going to use them for a little project later. So I'm saving those. And I'll just put those to the side so they're out of our way. So these are all my pieces that I've saved. Oh, and a calculator in case we need it, because you never know. Numbers go out the window when it's this late for me. But I have all these pieces, so I thought we would use these. And I think what I'm going to do is kind of group them kind of by color. So I'm thinking this one might be blues, and this one might be all these other random colors like yellows and that sort of thing. And then same thing here, like weird blues and yellows are mixed up. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll just play with it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the deal. 
I'm not gonna follow any of these instructions for cutting. I'm gonna do my kind of blob method, which I, I just love. I mean, that's, that's the thing I love most about paper piecing is that you can be sloppy, but everything turns out absolutely perfect and you have perfect seam allowances and everything. Yes, go blobs, right, Janelle? All right, so here are the bits. Um, we have the units, the unit ones and the unit twos. And I think what that just means is you know, you have with the dark background and then you have the light backgrounds, but all of them are actually the same, but it's just keeping these darks separated from the, the lights. Oh, you've always done blobs. Awesome. I mean, honestly, that is the best part of how paper piecing. Okay. So let's get going. I've already, I printed out another copy of those units and I have kind of sketched in just so I can remember. Uh, the dark background with the light triangles, dark background with light triangles. So I got two of those. And then I have the light, light backgrounds with the dark triangles, light backgrounds, dark triangles, just so I am organized. So we will work on these one at a time. I think I kind of want to work on one of these ones with all the crazy pieces in right away. So I'm going to put all these to the side. Okay. So let's get going here. I think I'm going to tilt you guys a hair down. Let me know if I slip ever, but here we go. I just need a little more space here. Okay. I got all my tools ready to go. So number one here, uh, this is, so th these go in order by, we're going to sew in order. So we do one and then we sew two to one and then we sew three to two four to that whole unit, five to that whole unit, six to that whole unit, seven to that whole unit, and eight to that whole unit. So that's that's how we're gonna do this. So we start with number one. Um, so number one, we're doing these dark backgrounds. So all this means is that it's not my white purple dot fabric. Anything that's white, we're gonna do the purple dot fabric. Anything that's filled in is gonna be a uh, thick premiere. You like the idea of using scraps. Oh yeah, you may have to see if you have enough. I have been, I have been collecting, I mean like I have a saturated amount of scraps just because I haven't been shy about cutting too much. Um, let's just start, let's make this kind of a blue, a blue, um, a blue block. Let's do that. So, you know, here's a big piece. What we're looking for in pieces is it has to be we're going big here. So if you're used to cutting a perfect quarter inch seam allowance, we're not doing that here. We are going to make sure that we have, so here's our, our one. We're going to make sure that we have a seam allowance around it of a quarter inch, but we want a whole lot more. We're going for blob just because it, when you're sewing it together and you're shy uh, at the end because you cut your quarter inch and it didn't line up perfectly, then you're in big trouble. It's better just to be big and cut down. And you know what? It is way more fun with paper piecing as well, doing the big blobs and cutting down. So I'm going to just start with here with this one. We got a good straight edge here already. So I'm going to just, you want, um, we're going to be looking at the numbers here, but you want the right side of the fabric facing outward. So I'm going to just put my fabric here and make sure it's covering all of number one plus the seam allowances all the way around. So here clearly it does and the right side is facing out. So this is actually the reverse of what we'll end up with. When we flip it around, you know, the right side will be correct. So this is the reviews reverse. Outer, do I need to leave the quarter inch? Um, do you need to leave this quarter inch? You don't, but I find that it's kind of helpful. It's a nice reminder um, to do a quarter inch here. You'll be trimming it later. It's not that big of a deal. I would just leave it. There's nothing wrong with it. So for the first block, I'm going to just pin it in place after the first, not the first block, after number one, the number one area. After number one, we'll remove that pin and we'll never need it again, which is awesome. So, all right, here is step one. After we got it pinned here, I am going to have a postcard. So if you have a postcard or a business card or, you know, even from a magazine, those little postcards that come in magazines, you want a piece of paper with, that's a little stiff. Uh, this is going to be kind of your, your straight edge. So I'm going to align my postcard a lot in between the one and two, because we're doing one first and we're connecting two to the one. We go in the order of the numbers. So I'm putting it right along that line. 
and then I'm going to fold along that line, all the entire length of the piece. So see, so this is kind of my straight edge. I use a little bit of fabric glue to hold in place, no shipping. Oh, that's a good idea. I should give that a try sometime. I don't have any fabric glue on me. Um, I'm still a little wary of the whole gluing fabric thing, but that's just my own like superstition. Um, I, I should give it a try though, for sure, sometime. All right, so I think this is where... Oh, you fold all your lines before you start. Oh, that's interesting, Pax. Uh, I like doing it this way. But yeah, you can definitely fold all your lines uh, before you start. So this is how I kind of do it. So I think this is where this, this, uh, this uh, attic order. So you said for the attic order, leave the postcard in it. All right, we can try that. I'm leaving the postcard in. All right, now I'm doing my attic quarter, and I'm butting it up right against, you know, that lip. I'm butting it up right against my postcard here. So that's automatically my, my quarter of an inch. So I'm going to just trim that. And that is going to be the first part of our perfect seam allowance. I suppose I could just throw this right back into the scraps bin, huh? Not a lot, about a penny to nickel size of glue on the first piece only. Okay, good to know. It's all right, we're going to wiggle around with this first piece with the pin, but that will be stopped soon. Okay, next. So we're kind of done with number one. Now we're moving on to two. You know, we need two pieces to sew together, so uh, number one is good to go. Um, yep, I got the added quarter ruler. We're going to give it a try. This next piece, though, I'll show you what to do without the added quarter. It's really easy. I mean, honestly, I kind of don't know why I need this otherwise, other than I don't have to line anything up and think, which is kind of the point of paper piecing is that you don't have to think. So, all right, once you get the system down, once you get the mechanicalness of it down, then it's really relaxing and you don't have to do anything. All right, so let's see. Number two is one of our white pieces. And I think I might, maybe I have a piece big enough in here. Uh, all these are looking pretty small. Yeah, so again, I need I need it to be as big as the piece plus a generous seam allowance. Um, so I'm going to, let's just move this up here for a sec. I'm going to trim, I'm going to cut a little piece out of here. So this is a rather big piece of fabric. Okay, let's just kind of get a sense of size. All right, I'm just going to cut kind of a blob out of here. You know what? I'm going to just cut it with my, my guy here. <laughs> there we go. Big blob. All right, so we do have some weird little cuts in here, but I think that'll be okay. Actually, I'm going to get a good straight edge on it. So I think I can use this add a quarter as a straight edge the other, the other side of it. Let's just, let's just get straight edge. All right. Oh, but this doesn't have my little rubbers on the bottom. I'll have to be careful. I have, I have another ruler here. Okay. So we did a little straight edge here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to flip our piece around and we are going to line up that straight edge with the straight edge from number one. Now here's where we're going to test it. Oh, and you want to put right sides together. So dots go against that. So I'm going to flip it around. So here's how we test. There's an odd add ruler, add enough ruler too. It helps measure the right amount of fabric for your piece. Oh, well, that's interesting. That I might have to, that I could see potential in for sure. So a ruler that helps you know how much to add on. I like doing the blob in a generous amount. So what we're doing here is I'm going to test to see if my piece is big enough. Um, and you don't have to do this all the time when you know for sure it's big enough, but this is a way you can test. I'm going to put pins along this line um, as if I'm sewing. So I'm just going to put a pin right along that line. Make sure your blob is your uh, as big as your piece plus a generous seam allowance. So I just I do uh, I do um at least you know I do it like maybe 
at least half an inch. But again, you want to be generous because if you have too much, you're fine. But if you have too little, then you're going to have to do your whole thing over, kind of, or potentially. So, all right, this is my pretend sewing line. And uh, so when I fold it up like this, as if it's already sewn, this piece should cover this number two piece. And it looks like it does really well. So I know that we are good to go here. So I am going to move over to the sewing machine and we are going to start stitching along the line here. Uh, it's an add, add a quarter ruler. So here you can, I don't know if you guys can see that, add a quarter. Uh, you could just, I, I think I found it on Amazon, just do add a quarter ruler. It's got that little lip, which I think makes it handy. All right, scooching over here. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. Let's tilt you up a bit. Okay. So one thing to remember when you're sewing for paper piecing is that you want to make your stitch length smaller because the smaller it is, the easier it is. I mean, you're going to perforate, um, you're going to add like little holes into your paper, which is like a perforation, which will make it easier to come off later. So that's why you want to do smaller, uh, smaller stitch length. So there's more perforation holes. So let's make sure I did that. Yep. I did my stitch length a little less. Um, I don't need my, let's tilt you up these guys a little bit more. I don't need, here we go. Is that better? I don't need my little ender thing here. So I'm going to just get rid of that for this project. Okay. So here we go. I am going to sew directly on this line. So exactly on this line. And I'm actually going to you can extend it into the seam allowance. You don't have to, you know, I think I'm going to just start a little, a little past the seam allowance, but the main thing is I want to go right on that line and then it ends on a seam allowance too. So I'll go a little into that later. We're like, if later when we sew this line, we're going to stop right here. We, we don't want to go further, but when you're going into a seam allowance or into like the outer seam allowance of the, of the block, then you can go a little further in. So again, right along that line, and I can move, remove those pins now too. So here's, I mean, this is the other reason I love paper piecing is I don't have to think about my perfect um, scant quarter inch anymore. With, uh, and you know, if you've been around with me working on these blocks, you know, I've been having so much trouble with that scant quarter inch. I'd rather carefully rip paper with a regular stitch length than seam rip those short. Ah, that's true, I suppose. I'm hoping that I don't, I won't have to, um, won't have to seam rip anything. So I'm going to do a back tack, which is just reversing it for a stitch. Ooh, let me get, get you guys in focus again there. Okay. And then again, I'm going to just continue following this line. All right. And I'll stitch into the seam allowance just a hair. And then back tack it again. All right. And that is number one to two. So I'm going to just snip it off. Got some paper that rips off easier. Oh, that's a good idea too. All right. So I'm going to just get you guys over here again. So right when I'm done sewing, so we, we don't need this pin anymore from pinning number one on. Right, right when I'm done sewing, I like to snip off the threads right away. So I'll do this. Ah, can't get it. There we go. The paper side first. There we go. And then flip it and do the fabric side. It's been so cold here today, today guys. My fingers are shivering. Okay. Now let's press it open and we can see what it looks like. It's going to look like crazy blobs to start out with, but it'll start looking really good. So when you press, you want to make sure that you leave the side with all your ink down because you don't want that touching your, your iron. 
You wore your winter coat today again. I know. I mean, seriously, it has. It was in the 30s today, and our heater is busted. The pilot light isn't staying on. So it's been extra cold in the house here. Oh, you're in southern Minnesota. Oh, yeah. So I'm in, I'm in Minneapolis, so I'm in kind of the southern Minnesota area, too. Uh, but, yeah, it was so cold. And so I have, that's why I'm, like, cowl on today again. It's just been chilly, chilly, chilly. I know, not fun. Um, so I think it's going to be like that for our wine walk, too, a little bit in, in the Wisconsin Dells area tomorrow. Uh, but I, I, I'm thinking when I, when we get back, I checked the seven day, when we get back here, it's going to be in the seventies again. So whew, I'm happy about that. All right, let's tilt down. And there we go. Here is piece one to piece two. So it looks crazy now, but that is our first sew, sewn pieces together. So, all right, let's move to number three. So number three is another scrap. Oh, it flipped again. Okay, here, let's try that. Are we good now? Oops. There, let me know. Let me know if we're back to the horizontal. Yep, good. Okay, good. Thanks, guys. That is helpful to let me know. All right, so let's pick a uh, fabric for number three. Uh, I think I want to use another kind of purpley blue fabric. So let's just, well, this was right in front of me, so why don't I just use this? Um, oof, that might be a hair small. So here, so here's what I mean. So I need a piece that's big enough to be three plus a good seam allowance. And I don't think this is enough seam allowance. You know, I have the quarter inch up here and I have about a quarter inch down here. Um, but this is just too close for comfort for me. So I'm going to up it to a bigger one if I got it. This one I think is the same width, but it's a little, it's a little, um, taller. So let's, let's try this piece. It's still going to be cutting it pretty close because we don't have too much at the side seam allowances, but I'm going to risk it just for the sake of using my, uh, my scraps up. So I got a pretty good straight edge here. So the first things first is we are going to do this postcard thing again. So now we're doing three, three against the units already done, which are one and two. So we are going to put, oh, you're brave. Yeah, because I'm using that tiny piece. Well, will see how it works. I'm a little nervous, but I think we're going to, we'll be just fine, hopefully. Um, all right, so going right along that line again, three in the, be between three and the units we've already done. And then folding up along that line. Getting a good crease there. All right, so now here's where the add a quarter ruler comes in again. So you can use the add a quarter ruler, which has that lip that goes right up against this. But if you don't have an add a quarter ruler, you can always just use a normal ruler and measure a quarter of an inch. So put that quarter of an inch right along your paper edge here. There you go. So see that did take that did take actually longer than just putting this right up against that. So I can see I can see why people like the add a quarter ruler actually. All right. So now let's. What we're doing now is we're trimming the seam allowance. You're running out of excuses. Your rulers came up. Better get started, Cora. All right, so zoop. See those blobs that we used to have? Now they are perfect seam allowances. All right. So there we are. Now let's get our little piece that we had here. So we're going to flip that around and put a line... This is the right side, this is the wrong side. It looks, it's really hard to tell with this fabric. But I'm putting right sides together again along that seam allowance. So I'm aligning this straight edge with that seam allowance that I just cut. I know, I better test it. I think I'm gonna. So this one, since this was so small, I'm gonna do that test. So flip it around. And to do the test, you're gonna pretend sew it. So I'm going to put pins along the line that I'm going to intend to sew on. I think I might put one more just to secure it even more. And again, this is just for testing. If I knew this piece was big enough, I wouldn't do it. All right, so there we go. We pretend sewn along our line. So let's open it up. So this is what it would look like 
when we're done and does it cover all of three with the seam allowance? I think it's perfect. Great. So this is going to be, this is going to work out just fine. So I don't need these pins anymore. Yes, you, right? Right, Pax? All right, so all I have to do is hold this so I can keep the seam, allow the seam allowances together here. Again, right sides are together. It's a little hard to tell with this fabric, but let's go sewing. Back over here. I'm going to have to tilt you guys up again, I think. Let's see if I can do that. And, all right. We'll go right there. Okay, now again, we are going... Now we are going between, let's turn this off. Uh, we are gonna go between the three, which is what we're doing now, and the unit we've already done. So that line is here, but this time we are gonna stop right at the point here. We don't wanna cross over into this line here. I am gonna add a little bit into the seam allowance again. I think that's okay, but this time we wanna stop right there. All right, again, just stitching along the line. Seam allowances are still lined up. There we go. And again, back tap it there. All right, I'm just going to that point. Take one more and then back tapping it again. All right, that looks good. Pull that out. And again, I am going to, you can cross, it'll be in the seam allowance. That's true. I just, um, I don't like when the paper rips there. I like going right up to the point. All right. Snipping, snipping the little threads. Right when I'm done sewing, here's the back. Let's press this open. Slide back over. Okay. So again, the printed side we'll put down on the iron or on the on the board. Warm it up a bit. And I, I kind of like finger pressing it open too because remember, not this whole length is sewn, only this little part in the middle here. So I just want to finger press it open just to help those bits that we didn't actually sew. There we go. Press it there. All right, we got one, two, and three on here. Looking kind of cute. I mean, again, it still it still looks like crazy blobs, but we are getting there. All right, so one, two, three, done. Let's do four down here. Ooh, after we do four, I think we might be able to see our first little, our first little um, triangle. All right, flipped again. Doesn't like when I go down. So here's up again, and I think maybe I just have to go down. Oops, slower. <laughs> that was not slower, <laughs> that was pretty jerky. All right, let me know if it gets better again. Okay, great. All right, let's do number four. So number four again is, Oh, wish your paper, wish your, wish, your, wish your printer was working too, Pax. Yeah, paper piecing is just, I find it just really relaxing. All right, let's throw in another scrap. Let's see. What about one of these? Oh, that looks, that looks nice and big. There, we can do it just like that. So this is, uh, this looks like we got that four inches, or this uh, number four plus the seam allowance around it. So this one, this one, let's try not measuring and see, see what we get. Or not, not doing that pin thing. So, all right, first things first, let's get the postcard. Now we're doing between four, which is the one that we're working now. So between four and everything we've done already over here. So right along here. And when I fold, I'm folding the whole length across, not just this little part that's for number four. All right, here we are. Let's do the add a quarter. Uh, it is nice that it just bumps up against there. All right, so now we're cutting our perfect seam allowance. Ta-da! Best part. 
I love that you can be sloppy with the blobs, but you still get absolutely perfect seam allowance. Hello, thanks for coming in. We're paper piece in the way. All right, so we got the good seam allowance. Now let's flip, flip back over, and we are going to align. Let's go this way. This one doesn't really have a front or back. We knew you'd like that ruler. <laughs> I like it. It's true, Diane. Okay, so I'm going to place it there, and this is going over the seam allowance, so I know we have enough seam allowance on this side, and I think we we uh, pretty much determined that it was good to go. Um, so, all right, right sides together again. This one doesn't really have a right side, which is extra bonus special for paper piecing. Um, all right, and let's flip and start sewing again. Go back to the machine. All right, now we're gonna sew along number four. This time I'm gonna just start at that middle point. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. I just do whatever is easiest. All right, and then I'm gonna back tack it and keep sewing along that line. Oh, you've never seen paper piecing done before. It is, once you get it going, once you get the system down, it is honestly, I think one of my most favorite ways of, um, of quilting. It's just, it's just relaxing. Next, I should try the loca block rulers. Okay, well, I'll have to look into that too. Uh, this blended sampler has definitely been uh, new for me for trying gadgets. I haven't been much of a gadget person uh, before. Oh, thanks for coming in, uh, Jean. But, you know, so now you got me trying all these gadgets. I've, I've got, a. Uh, I think the little stickies for the bottom of my ruler are still, um, still my favorite. I got these little rubber stickies for the bottom of my rulers, and man, I think that's my favorite gadget so far, but now we're trying this, uh, add a quarter ruler, and that's pretty slick, too. All sorts of gadgets. Oh, you love watching. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate you coming in. All right, let's let's press. I like being here, <laughs> and I like chit-chatting with you guys. It's the best part of the day. All right, I'm going to give it a little press here. And now I'm going to finger press it open again first. And then we'll press it. Where did you find the pretty st stiletto? Oh, Diana uh, from, she's on here. I think she might still be live here. Uh, she's in the chat, but she's a viewer and she, she sent them to me. Isn't it pretty? It's a turkey skewer with, uh, you know, really pretty beads glued onto it. All right, so look, we got our first little flying goosies in there. All right, our first little triangle. I know, right? When it starts to come together, it comes together. It's just, you know, we got our perfect super duper uh, triangle. Okay, we flipped again. All right. It doesn't like when I go down, apparently, from, from here. Let me know if we flip back. Okay, here we are. So we are done with, uh, we're done with four. So let's go on to five, which is another one of these white flying geese. So let's let's cut a big chunk of fabric here again. So again, I need it. Uh, I need it as big as this triangle plus a generous seam allowance, especially since I'm just not measuring and doing blobs and all that. You know, I could probably just go right across here and we'd be good. Get a little triangle thing going. Let's see. Grab one of these rulers. Cut two all at once. Yeah, I suppose I could do that. Why don't I do that? I'll cut a. I'll cut a square. I'll just chop this section here into a square quick and then just diagonal it and then be done with it. Kind of a blob still. I'm not measuring, just cutting. There and there should be good. I love not measuring. <laughs> it's just so nice not to have to measure with paper piecing. Just blobs and more blobs. It's awesome. 
So all right, I am gonna get a good straight edge along here so that the straight edge will use. And uh, this one I'm gonna, ooh, wow. Oh, my blade might be getting dull. I'll have to switch blades before next time. So I'm gonna just press that quick because that's, that's kind of gonna wrinkle in there. This one's probably fine. Okay. So we got our, we got these ready. One's gonna be for five and one's for eight. So that was a good idea. Pax cutting, cutting both right away. Okay. First things first is we fold along the five line now. So it's between five and everything before it. You see, I don't even, I don't even cut off these weird little ends because I know they're gonna get cut off um, later. Ooh, sharper blades today. Hey, do you know of a good blade sharpener? Because I feel like I, I go through so many, so many rotary cutter blades, and I haven't found a good sharpener. I haven't tried a mechanical one, but I've tried one where you just um, go in between the pieces, and uh, or it's like a. I don't know, it's like two two pieces together like this and you go in between them and it's supposed to sharpen it. And I haven't found, oops, I'm supposed to leave that in there. I haven't found that to work all that well for me. So I don't know, I could use, I have, you know, I have a, at least 20 used blades. So here's the add quarter. It is kind of nice just to plop this up against there and not have to think it, you know, it takes one more non-thinking thing for me, which I love. <laughs> So, all right, there's our perfect seam allowance. This is actually kind of perfect for late night sewing for me because you just get in the system of doing it and, it, and uh, I hate cutting in the evenings. You've tried the sharpeners, but no luck. Yeah, I haven't had great luck either. All right, let's, oh, and that's Diane right there, Diane Byatt. She's, she's uh, made these super cute, this super cute stiletto and I have another one over here too, but I have to clean up my area. It is such a mess over here. All right, so there we are. Now let's put our straight edge that we just cut right sides together. This is clearly plenty big, so I'm not even gonna bother um, measuring, or I'm not gonna bother the painting thing at all. This piece is huge, but that's, I love that, that you can just make a huge piece. So let's just leave it like that for now while I slide over and we will sew it up. I'm hoping we can get one of these units done tonight. That would be pretty cool. All right. Oops, I think I'm caught on something here. Oh yeah, the bottom of my foot. There we go. Okay, so let's make sure our, our seam allowances are lined up, that, that nice edge that we cut, and flip that around. And now we are going to sew just be on that five line. So here to there. You know this little this guy that I have here, this this business card for my scant quarter inch is kind of getting in my way for this, but I'm leaving it there. All right, I'm gonna backpack it. Oh, thanks for coming in. Yes, um, check the replay, and I'll I'll be putting these on YouTube. As well, I think I'm I'm doing a lot of that YouTube research to get this going, working for me. And you guys are right; you can't see all my other other uh, things that have, that are up there. I thought you guys could, but then I realized, like, oh, only I can see that right now. <laughs> so I will get those up. I'm I'm learning YouTube as I go a little bit, um, and transferring all these these bits, uh, all these videos to it these live streams, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. True sharp power sharpener for rotary blades. Good, but expensive. Uh, it might be, it, it might be kind of worth it. I'm gonna have to look that up. Thanks for, thanks for the recommendation. Oh, you found me on YouTube. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. I'm hoping uh, more people can start to find me on YouTube. I'm just starting to get, get all these old, um, oh, you saw my penguin and fish movie. I'm just starting to get these, these videos up here. Uh, if you guys want to see where, we got our name, Penguin and Fish, from the name of my company. Uh, you should go check out the video that I have up on YouTube. Um, it's a little animation that I did in college, and that's that's uh, how how it does. Oh, Cora, um, I I saw that email. Thanks so much for sending that. I think that is that's exactly. Oops, let's let's give this a press too. Um, 
That's exactly what I'm going to try and do. I'm, I'm recording this to my computer right now, and so you guys will see all the you know, you guys will basically see my screen. And if it doesn't work, because sometimes like last night's didn't work, um, last night's didn't work because the file of this recording, since it's 50 minutes long, it's so big. This file, like it is like 50 gigabytes or something, right? It's huge. So it, it quit on me before I was able to save last night's. But I do I do have the Periscope version of it. It, it just won't be as pretty and clear um, as, as I want it to be. But if this one works, then this will be my first one where it'll be crystal clear. It'll look better than what it does on Periscope in the YouTube. And that is, that's the plan. So we'll see how that goes. Let me know if we flipped again, guys. We have the start of our next little... Um, little uh triangle here are the beads glued to the skewer i think so i don't know maybe diane can can um chime in she she made these um i'm trying to get it in focus i i believe there's probably a little dab of glue there but i love how, how fun and simple and and you know it's just pretty i like it i like it a lot all right moving on let's do number six so six is uh, another filled in shape. So it's really helpful to, that I scribbled that these are the dark areas and these are the light areas. It really helps to be a, a hair less confusing. So I'm going to just grab this guy just kind of popped out at me. Um, this is clearly a big enough piece. I'm not even going to cut it. We'll, we'll cut it all later. All right. So here we go. I got a good enough. Um, I got a good enough straight edge there. I don't need to cut it again. Oh, but I forgot. First things first, we got to do our seam allowance thing. So again, we're going in between six now and everything that we've done before. All right, so right on that line. I love this. This is my favorite part. I love that you can do blobs that have like little nicks and all this garbage in it. But magically with this postcard thing and a quarter inch, you got a perfect seam allowance. And you'll see all of these seam allowances when we take the paper off when we're done, but it's magic. It's magic that I don't have to measure. I can just have blobs, which is so relaxing because I don't have to think. And then I still have perfect seam allowances. It is so magic, Cora. I am with ya. All right. We are gonna throw this right there. Again, this is plenty, plenty big. All right, let's scooch over here again. Do the machine. Oh, that's the glue that you guys use. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, these are just, they're so beautiful. I really like, really like the stiletto. And Diane was just so sweet to, to send them. Send one, send a couple my way. All right, so here we are. We, we're all lined up here. Let's. Flip it around, and I'm flipping it around and still holding it in place. You could pin this, but pins kind of just get in the way. It's easier to just hold it. All right, so going along this number six line. Press it, put that on. So I am going into the seam allowance a little bit. All right, let's back check it, and then going along that line. And remember, remember to put right sides together. Uh, I haven't been saying that every time. But that's something you'll want to do. All right, back checking it again. I'm going right up to that point. All right, done with that again. Only two more to do, guys, and then um, then we'll be done here. You know what? We're we're kind of getting low on time though. Uh, but we'll we'll try and crank through these last two bits. And it's okay if we stop in the middle, uh, because I'll be here again doing it. I kind of want to maybe, maybe I won't finish the whole thing tonight, just because I want to make sure that uh, I want to. I'm still testing this whole computer thing for um, transferring. 
uh, all these periscopes. And I'm kind of scared about letting it go too much. Yep, okay, yeah, so tomorrow night, yep, I am gonna be out tomorrow night. We're going to the Dells, Wisconsin Dells, for their wine walk, and I get to visit my brother and his wife and um, my mom and dad again. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be fun. And uh, I am going to, uh, you know, I might not be here on Saturday either. I was just thinking, it depends on when we leave, when we leave there. Because uh, it is it is like a four hour drive. All right, so we got the start of our next next one. So now we can start to see the shape of of this square. So that's kind of fun. Okay, so flipping it around, let's do number seven. Let's do this fold thing first. You know what? I'm gonna trim off these scraps. I don't need any of this. There we go. Get that out of the way. Okay, so number seven, let's fold our line first. I'm gonna try and go a wee bit faster through, through this towards the end. Look at all our blobs. That's like gonna be our seam allowance. Add a quarter, get that right up in there. Magic seam allowance, love it. Okay. Seven, we need another fun fabric. Let's see, what haven't we used yet in here? We haven't used this kind of weird blobby stuff. Oh, that's not very big though. I wonder if we need this piece to stick around. I wonder if I have a bigger piece. What else do we got? This is the trouble using scraps is, um, oh, that those pieces are still together already. Oh, this is kind of fun. Eh, that's not gonna be big enough. Why don't we use this one? It's it's kind of on the lighter side. Um, it's not as dark as the uh, these other ones, but I think overall it's still gonna have that feeling of dark. And I kind of like I kind of like when whites blend into other whites in the darks. I think it is this kind of cool effect. So we're just gonna use this. Um, this piece is clearly gonna be big enough. Um, I'm gonna just let's see if it will work over here. Okay, number seven here. I'm gonna trim this because I don't need to have all this bulk around. I only have this tiny root, tiny scissors right here, so let's just get that out of the way. It's still plenty big. It sort of echoes the light blue squares. Oh, that's true. It, it kind of echoes that. So, all right, right sides together. Line up the straight edges. This is going to match up no matter what anywhere, so all right. Let's switch back over to the sewing machine. And so this little guy on here. So now I'm sewing in between the seven line and everything else that came before it. Okay. Right on that line. And I'm going to back tack it again. And I'm going to go a little bit into that seam allowance again and back tap. All right. One more, guys. We're almost there. I know. One more seam, right, Pax? Exciting. So, well, there's actually four more of these, these blocks, but I think this will be fun. This is, it's kind of neat to use up all these scraps. Um, I've been collecting these scraps uh, for 21 blocks now, and... It's time to empty some of them out, you know? <laughs> my, my clipboard's getting pretty fat here. I know, it, it goes quickly. I mean, and you know, I'm going, I'm kind of chit-chatting and um, thinking around here too. So uh, just imagine if you got in the flow of doing this and had a good podcast on or something, it would be, it would be real quick. Oh, thanks for so thanks for coming in tonight. I appreciate it a bunch. And look, we got our we got our last piece pre-cut already. So all right, there we go. We got two two of our flying geese in there. How huh, fun! All right, tilting you down again. Let me know if you flip again. All right, let's go around. Now on to number eight, our last piece. 
Let's do the, oh, it did flip. Ah, oh, dang. All right, let's go up. Usually if I go up and then come back down, it's okay. So, all right. Good. Awesome. All right. Right along that line again. Add a quarter. You know what? This add a quarter really is making this go faster, I have to say. I was pretty reluctant to use it. Um, we haven't had a chance to yet for picker piecing, but you know what? I, I like it. There we go. On iPhone, you can lock your screen. Oh, that might be a good idea. Uh, you told me so. Yep. I like it. Ooh, I didn't quite get that, but that's okay. All right, there we go. There's our nice straight edge. We can put this guy on there. Clearly, this is large enough, but I love that. All right, back to the sewing machine. We are almost done. Ah, I'm not going to trim this down, though. I'm not going to trim the square until I have all of them done, um, just because I kind of like doing it all at once. Flipping that around. So we're gonna have crazy blobs yet. I might trim it down actually. We'll see. Yeah, maybe I'll trim it down already. We'll check the time. I think we might be running a little late. I don't know, I think I might wait, Pax. We'll um because we're we're getting kind of late here. I think I'm gonna just leave it as is. I kind of like leaving it unfinished, then it gives me something to do right away when I start up again. It gives me like a, a, um, a task, you know, and sometimes, sometimes when you have a task undone, it's easier to start a project, start the project up again. You're not wondering what to do next and all that. Yeah, I love when it's done too, but I think in this case, it might be good to just leave it a, a hair undone. Continuum. There you go. I've become used to the idea of feeling a hair uncomfortable, or like feeling feeling comfortable with the uncomfortableness of leaving things undone uh, for the sake of being able to come back to it. Gets you in a rhythm. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, just getting, getting over that barrier of starting is a big deal, and if this helps to leave something unfinished, then that's, you know, valuable. press there. All right, guys, and let's, um, let me tilt you down again here. Let me know if you flip. I just don't want to. Oh, your signal is wacky. Yeah, when you go uh, out and come back in. There we go. It's a little ironic when you're in the finish all the things mode. I know, but that's, that's more on the global scale of finish, finishing. Um, when I finish this block, that'll be finishing all the things. But look, so here is what the paper piecing did. We have perfect points. You know, it's just we didn't have to think at all during this whole process. And uh, there we go. We are done. All these are sewn. We are done with this first first part. And, you know, you can get a little sense of what it would look like if we fold those under. But it's looking pretty cute. Yay, I'm excited. So this is going to be our, our constant throughout. We're going to keep on using this, this uh, white with the, the dots, but everything else will be, will be kind of random. I mean, we went with blues. Next time we might go with all these weird yellows, but we'll see. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around, but there we are. We got the first part of Block 22 done. All right. Hey, again, guys. So here it is for size. Look, it ain't big. <laughs> it's pretty small. So we got four more. No, no, no. We got three more of these, and then they will all kind of be pointing to the center. So all these little, all these little guys will be pointing in the center. So one out of one out of four done. <laughs> but there's paper piecing for you. It really is relaxing. Um, if you haven't tried it before, I totally encourage you to give it a try. Uh, and again, this will be up on YouTube if you wanna watch it again and it'll be on periscope for another 24 hours so <laughs> thank you again guys for coming in tonight again tomorrow i won't be here 
which I'm a little bummed about, but we'll have a, I'll be drinking wine. <laughs> and so that'll be fun. And then um, it'll be a question mark for Saturday just because I don't know, you know, it's a long drive. I don't know quite when I'll, when I'll be back. But Sunday for sure, we'll be back here and it'll be a new block on Sunday. Um, so we might get some more paper piecing in. Otherwise, new block on Sunday. Uh, thanks again, guys. Have a great evening and have a great weekend as well. Great Friday tomorrow. Good night.